Good afternoon, monkeys, and welcome to another installment of our RCT Classic Series for iPad. Uh, this is episode two, so uh, we've got some good stuff happening here. We're going to build our first roller coaster. Now, I don't know if you can kind of see what's going on here. I look like I'm having a little bit of trouble in figuring out the direction I want to go. Um, I actually did three or four different coasters in this area to start or attempted to build them and it just it was such a struggle to kind of figure out the direction I wanted to go with this area you know when you first walk into a new area in a theme park you want to walk into uh, a, a statement right so that's kind of the direction I went with this uh, in building the first coaster here and it is a uh, GCI quote unquote type wooden roller coaster uh, for those of you who don't uh, know what a GCI is, Great Coasters International. Um, uh, really, really cool idea here. Uh, and kind of what I went in with. Uh, I wanted to give you know, a really wild, tense, intense, crazy ride. Very, and uh, by the way of Wicker Man. I think uh, Wicker Man, for those of you that don't know what it is, over in Alton Towers uh, in the UK. You know, really good drop. Uh, off the start and then the rest of the ride stays very low to the ground uh, twist and turning all the way through uh, really aggressive push uh, the whole ride through uh, and really giving an intense uh, roller coaster ride as that's what we created here if you can see you've got that initial turn that drops off to the left you come uh, back up and then you go into a right turn into a twisted left turn up into a, a right turn and then another right turn dropping down i mean it just goes up and down and back and forth and left and right and that's kind of the intention we went with here just to give it a really wild intense crazy ride now going towards the end of the ride here uh trying to figure out the direction i wanted to bring it towards the end was tough right so we build this double down uh coming out of uh that last turn uh, and then I decide, hey, you know, what if we did just one last twist it up because we had a lot of empty space there uh, in that opening. Uh, twist it back up and then back around here uh, into a drop and then back into the brake run. Um, one thing you'll notice about this ride too is that the pathway weaves in and out underneath the coaster. Now that's a huge thing uh, for this ride, uh, for this game, excuse me. For those of you that don't know, um, you actually increase the t statistics of the ride, uh, ride's assignment level if you have pathways running in and around it. And you'll see uh, the statistics pop up in a moment in the very end of the video. Uh, what I'll do is I will not only throw up the statistics uh, once the full area is complete with all of the theming, but I'll also layer in uh, a run through of the ride so you can see what that looks like as well in regular speed, obviously. Uh, so you can see that. But here we are just building the pathway around. Now, the whole intention I wanted to do here was, you know, have this one massive area. You've got this coaster in the center, right? This is your statement ride. And, you know, every area in a theme park, again, we're building a theme park here, uh, once to have that, that massive statement ride, right? So that's what this is. This is that, that big monster that's like, oh my God, I need to get on that, right? Um, and what it does, weaving in and out of the pathway and over the pathways there. Uh, for me, where I wanted to bring this uh, area into is kind of like, okay, well, what's your quintessential number one theme every theme park goes after in a, in a theme park? It's almost always Wild West, right? Uh, so what we did was here is we built out, as you can see, um, the pathway going in and out and underneath there for the queue as well. Um, but as I was doing this, I'm thinking, okay, well, how can I create a Wild West theme? Uh, so for this uh, portion of the area, or this portion of the theme park, I should say, I decided to go with a Wild West mining theme, right? So I think very Alpine-esque, a lot of pine trees. It's going to be a, uh, a mountainous area that we build shortly, and I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, or you'll see that in a little bit. But uh, again, think very rustic, think very, you know... Uh, 1700s 1800s in the mountains mining uh areas maybe even like 1600s um but very very uh early industrial america right 
so what I did here is I built a big open space and I wanted to build a, a, our flat rides here. And again, with the whole idea of, of mining, I wasn't exactly sure how I was gonna theme this uh, per se, but went after the launch free fall. The launch free fall, uh, which is your quote unquote SNS drop, uh, drop and launch towers. So built those in here uh, directly next to each other. And as you can see, I've got uh, a pretty decent height. And, and what I like to do is I always tend to put two of these together for the most part. Uh, I give a nice little windy, see there, windy uh, cue. But um, I like to put two of them together so you have one launching and one dropping. Uh, so you give a little variety for your guests in the park as well. Now one thing you want to do is when you're testing these is, is make sure you don't go over that 70 mile per hour mark. It tends to uh, turn the guests off. So now that we've got these rides in, uh, we're going to, um, I did a little bit of adjustment there on the chain lift speed, but we're going to jump now into uh, theming. Oh, I lied, but first we're going to build out um, our handyman and our uh, mechanics and security uh, again got to make sure that you know with the park being open customers and guests being able to walk through we want to make sure we keep it clean and keep the rides running right and you'll see I make that mistake in a little bit with a ride that I build in another ride I build in this area all right my favorite way to build out uh, the wooden coasters as well when I'm doing like an all brown rustic look is as you can see they're from lightest to darkest left to right okay and then that's your that's your kind of look of, of, of what that's gonna look like there um, all right now uh, as we watch the coaster go around uh, you're gonna see we jump right into next um, uh, should be theming. I'm very uh, particular when it comes to my pathing as well. <laughs> so you'll notice I put a lot of time into the pathing because uh, you end up in this game with moments where if your path work isn't uh, correct, your guests in the park will lag. Uh, they call them laggers, right? So they get stuck in a corner and can't get out of it. And there are some tips and tricks that I'll show you guys later on uh, where we can go around that. But here we are going into uh, the theming again, as I said, and started building out uh, the tunnel building that we're gonna go through in our initial descent. Um, as you see, very simple here, uh, just a simple wood shed uh, kind of deal, nothing too dramatic or crazy. Now with our, our wooden coasters, we love uh, support wooden coasters, right? It really, it's really what gives us that, you know, oh wow or aha moment. When you're on that ride and you're, you're kind of twisting and turning in between all of these supports, and that's what we build out here. Uh, and then just a tunnel for the, the pathway underneath uh, for our guests to walk through. I love using these diagonal uh, walls as well and uh, ceiling pieces. Uh, it's a really cool way to just build out your uh, any type of diagonal walkways or if you have a diagonal uh, stretch of coaster or ride that you want to tunnel in, uh, works really well. And again, sticking with all the, the brown, wooden, rustic feel, right? All right, and continuing with the supports here. Now, I like to, to bring this, the, those supports just to the the, the cross support just below the track there so it gives like a really nice clean feel very consistent and even uh, all the way across and we bring it down just to the top of that uh, tunnel there
And again, just to the top of supports there. Now, uh, this is something I like to do. Uh, pretty my mining areas. You'll see I, I do a lot of these like cross pieces. Uh, just a very industrial feel um, where you've got to walk through these uh, massive iron girders. Think very uh, like Pennsylvania, you know, um, Steelers country, if you will, for anybody who's from uh, the East Coast of America or has ever seen kind of what that looks like. I think very, you know, Steelers, Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania. But uh, yeah, so this is a massive uh, building on top of those types of iron, giant iron steel girders. All right, and what I like to do here too, as you can see, is I build little wooden walkways that go underneath uh, the coasters as well. And a good way to increase uh, your rides excitement rating is to kind of put all of these pieces in right so you have different girders around little tunnels for your coaster to go in and out of as well um, uh, and by building all of this stuff out and to here I was trying to build up another one but it was you know, there's way too much track like twisting in and out of each other there I'm probably gonna go back and add some more at a later date uh, but um, just to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like and how I build that All right, and something uh, as well that increases your uh, rides excitement level is by really theming out that pathway as well and giving different areas for your your guests to walk through um, as they're walking through their their uh, the queue path there. Um, so throwing some theming in there as well really excites the customer and the guest in the park. All right, here we are in that entryway building for the ride. So. Again, you know, not only is this the entryway for the building for the ride, but this is the first statement building that your guest is going to see when they're walking into this area. So what I like to do, uh, what I decided to do in this area was to create a statement building, right? So that big wow moment when you walk in and you're like, holy moly, what am I, you know, what am I getting engulfed into? What is this environment? What is this experience, right? So I wanted to create an extremely in-depth, overwhelmingly enveloping experience for that guest when they walk in to the park. And you'll see as I build this building out, uh, I kind of play with a couple of ideas, but I, I, you know, again, I have no idea what I'm doing at this point, right? I'm kind of just uh, playing it by ear, kind of feeling, getting good vibe and feel of what it looks like, you know? I, I've been asked a couple of times, you know, what, what makes you come up with these ideas or where do these ideas come from? Do you map it out? No, I don't do any of that. You know, it all really just goes by feeling and kind of what I think is going to look good and what's going to feel good uh, for the area. You know, and you'll see I zoom in and out a lot as well. You know, I, I really look for that uh, moment where you get in tight and you kind of see what that guest experience would look like and you pull it back and get an overall big picture from a macro and a micro experience. Now you see as this building's taking shape, and imagine walking into that and you're seeing this big massive mining building, and I think the first thing you walk into, right? Uh, when you walk into this area, you're like, okay, you know, now I get it. I, you know, I really feel engulfed by this. I see this big massive, you know, structure. Like, what is this about? Again, throwing in a number of benches and garbage bins like we did last time and then our lamp posts as well and that's something i'm gonna have to go back into i noticed i didn't do a lot of lamp posts throughout the rest of the area except for here in the front so i'm gonna have to revisit that uh here we are throwing in the quarter wall as well again giving that nice finished edge and i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go back as well and you'll see once we start putting in all the foliage and everything uh, but I want to change the ground texture or the, the, the ground uh, coloring as well. All right, so we just threw in a pond here. Um, again, kind of giving that very, you know, uh, outdoorsy, woodsy feel. So we you know, threw in a pond, 
Uh, I love to layer in all of these little uh, shrubs as well, and then uh, the uh, water reeds there. Uh, the whole idea of that is just to kill the whole edge of that water there because it, it makes it feel very unnatural by having that edge. I and mean, when you throw these uh, shrubs in and, and bushes in around it, it gives it more of a natural feel. And then we've got a bunch of uh, fun trees here that we're throwing in and kind of keeping it open. We're not closing it in completely so the guests can still see into the trees, in through the trees to see the pond because that's the whole point, right? We want them to see it. But uh, yeah, now we're just gonna fill in with a bunch of these alpine trees, the red firs. It's a really nice feeling when you walk in. So in looking at the other side of this entryway, I was thinking to myself, you know, oh my God, you know, we've got this big open space. I don't wanna fill it with, with trees and just trees and theming. Like what can I do here? And you'll see in a little bit kind of what happens there. It kind of really gives a very good flow of both theming and uh, attraction as well. and see how we utilize those buildings there um, for the uh, prefab. Now, as we throw up the sign for this coaster, I don't have a name for it. Uh, I haven't named it yet. I, I would love to put it out there for you guys. Um, if you see anything or get an idea of kind of what you want to name this coaster, uh, think very mining town, very, you know, alpine rustic, uh, I, I'd love for you guys to name the coaster. So um, if you guys would mind doing that, you guys throw a name in there for me, that would be awesome. You know, put in the comments below, what is the name of this coaster? Uh, and again, remember it's an Alpine theme. So think very uh, alpine -y, if you will. Um, and along with that coaster, I'd love a backstory. You know, what's the backstory behind this coaster? Like, why is this coaster plopped right here in the middle? <gasps> excuse me, of this theme park, right? So so what is the backstory behind it? So it's not only a coaster um, with a fun, crazy name uh, with a mining theme, but there's what's the story behind it? You know, why why is it here? You know, and again, uh, I'd love for you to put that in uh, the comments below. That would be absolutely fantastic. All right, and here we are just edging out our walkways here around the queue. Uh, it's really great to see that coaster weave in and out, uh, up and over things, right? And underneath, super cool. So now we're building out just a random uh, uh, tower. Again, this is the last bit of uh, thing you'd walk through before getting onto the coaster. You walk up into this tower, and then when you walk out, as you would just walk into the ride, you know, the coaster zooms right underneath you. It's almost like that quote unquote uh, flyby experience you get in the station. Pretty awesome, huh? A lot of this path work, you know, it, it does get a little tedious uh, as you go around and, and kind of edging it off, but it really gives it a, a solid, uh, clean presentation, right, for your guest. And that's what we're going after here. And again, all of this increases your, your, your uh, guest happiness, it increases your guest. Uh, excitement rating for the coaster, uh, moving inside and outside of these trees, it, you know, it increases that excitement level, so it makes it more desirable for the, the guests to ride, right? And look at that, that's looking fantastic already. All right, now here we are going into that open space, and this is where I get excited. So I love building the, this, this quote-unquote trebuchet topspin. Um, you, you know, I, I don't know what it is. It's just something about this ride for this type of area. Uh, so this is gonna be ride number two I'm gonna ask you guys to name. Um, so it's gonna be a top spin, again, mined around, uh, or themed around mining, right? So what does that look like? What do, what do we name it, right? Um, uh, think very uh, in, in the mines and what's the backstory behind it, right? Like what does this machine do uh, in a mining town? Right, so what, what do we wanna create here? What type of type of backstory? So I'm gonna put that on you guys, and again, put that in the comments below. You know, what do you guys wanna name this right here? All right, still filling in these trees here. Uh, again, wrapping all the way around. You'll see I kind of, you know, kind of go back and forth uh, a little bit. I don't stay consistent on one particular ride or, or, or specific area because, you know, you get a little bored 
right? And I think you need that inspiration. You step away for a second, step back in, you get re-inspired. Uh, and that's kind of what I, I do a lot here. And you'll see that as I build this out. And I like to do a lot of variation in our roofing as well, just to give a little bit of, you know, uh, variety for us as, as the player, you know, sitting here looking at this, it's just like, okay, it's all the same flat roof, all the same um, uh, arched roof or uh, banked roof, if you will. See, now that gives a really great uh, kind of look, engulfing that, that gust, that, that guest, excuse me, in... Uh, in the environment and again this is you know it's a mining machine so what does this mining machine do you know and that's the question I want to ask you guys uh, in the in the comments below like, what is the name of this ride uh, and what's the backstory behind it like what does it do all right look at that I'm getting a clear look at kind of what everything is and and, and making sure we're getting all those spaces filled in. Now, what I like to do is I spin the camera a lot just so I can make sure I hit every 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 piece filled in. And the goal is to fill in everything so you don't see the green underneath, right? All right, so now here we are. We're gonna continue building out um, our pathway edging and then all of the bench work as well as the um, uh, garbage bins uh, and uh, just some scenery and theming around the area. Um, now, I like what I do here. I do this in a number of my parks uh, in this game. I create little side areas with entertainers, right? So uh, I created this little, little quote unquote village and threw a couple of entertainers in here. And it stays along the pathway. So as the guests are walking past, you know, they can see that. Uh, just gives a little bit of variety into kind of what we're building out uh, for our guests to enjoy. Now again, obviously none of these buildings are functional. They're, they're just for show, right? It's probably my favorite piece of theming for this um, spe uh, specific set of theme. Uh, it's called junk. <laughs> it's just a bunch of stuff in a pile. <laughs> All right, we want to keep, you know, obviously uh, your foliage low so your guests can see in and kind of see what's going on, and then you don't want to close it completely. All right, now here we're gonna build out another food outlet uh, for our guests. Now the intention here is that this is that big food hall that's gonna be within this particular area. It's kind of central and you'll see uh, what I mean by that in a moment uh, when it comes to this area. But the whole idea was, you know, here's that uh, next food outlet. After you walk through that main plaza, this is the next major space that you're gonna grab food. And I love this little trick here where you separate the pathways with the fencing uh, and then delete the fencing and you kind of got you know, a nice little seating area for your guests uh, in this food outlet. Now, obviously we can't make it uh, truthfully be that way, but again, if this is a food outlet or if it's a quote unquote restaurant, Right, your guests would walk in and then we build out the second floor. You'll kind of see there's gonna be a balcony, there's windows along the second floor. You know, almost imagine where that's where the guests are gonna go up to the second floor. They can sit, they can watch the coaster go uh, on the balcony as they, <laughs> excuse me, eat their food and look out.
I love a good terrace uh, area to sit and eat and watch the coasters go. I could remember being at um, Six Flags Over Texas and I found this really great spot to just sit um, at one of the pizzerias and overlooks you know, this massive area of rides where you've got like two two flat rides in front of you and a coaster. You sit there eating and watching them go. And that's the whole intention of kind of this little patio area here. All right, now this is the area I was talking about in the back here. Uh, and again, this is the third thing I'm gonna put on you guys to put down in the comments below. You know, what do you think, uh, what type of ride should we put here? Um, I'm going to put that on you guys. You know, what do you guys think? What type of ride? Um, uh, I'll give you three options. Uh, first option would be a mine train. Obviously, I feel like that's the given, right? Um, so a mine train uh, back over here would be our second coaster. Uh, so that could be pretty cool. Your second option uh, would be a river rapids. Uh, so think uh, the round boat river rapids. Uh, kind of going through this mountain and, and weaving in and out of it. Um, the third option would be a log flume. Again, thinking about the whole like mining uh, idea here. And this is the area here I, I remember. Uh, if you remember me saying I forgot to add in handyman and uh, cleaners here for that. But uh, going back to uh, the mountains. So we've got uh, three potentials. We've got a mine train. We've got a log flume or we've got a river rapid. So those are the three options we're gonna put in there. Uh, uh, I'm gonna put out to you guys. So I want you guys to vote, put in the comments below, what do you think we should have on that mountain in that back corner? Uh, and those are your three options. Again, mine train, river rapids, or the log flume. All right, so here we are putting in some uh, further, uh, guest facilities for bathroom. Um, I like to put an information uh, center or information kiosk, uh, one, at least one in every area, sometimes two, depending on the size of the area. But uh, again, an information kiosk in a bathroom there. Uh, we did one up by the front when you first walk in. Um, and as you see, there's a lot of you know uh, guest vomit on the floor. We tend to that in a moment. We put in a bunch of benches. Uh, we also add in an extra handyman just to wrap around that corner. Um, yeah, all right, cool. Now next up, uh, I love this part here. So we've got um, this whole corner of the park, uh, that we're, or the, the area that we're building in, kind of trying to figure out uh, what's gonna happen here. Like, what do these two rides do? What type of rides are these? Right, so there, one's a drop tower, one's a uh, launch tower. So as we're setting the colorways for these, uh, I think very mining, industrial, so we threw in the yellow and the red. And um, uh, now we just have to figure out how do we want to theme it, right? So thinking about the whole mining, uh, I kind of blocked it all out, as you can see here. And created one mass master building, right? That both of these uh, towers are in. Think very uh, Dr. Doom's uh, drop towers in Universal Orlando. Uh, and now once we built out this ma this main building that these two towers launch out of and drop into, uh, we now theme around it. Again, all of this adds to the excitement rating of the ride uh, in the game as well. Love my barrels. <laughs> you know, it's not a Western or a mining area without any barrels. Actually, probably almost every area I built has barrels in it, to be honest with you. <laughs> All right, and here we are with that iron or steel trellis work again, giving that very mining feel uh, around the entryway and exit of both of these uh, towers here. Um, and just layering in some trees there. And that's kind of what that looks like, you know? Again, keeping it very 
very free flowing. There's no rhyme or reason, kind of just whatever feels good, you know? All right, now we're, we're moving into uh, the final stages of this area where we're layering in uh, our quarter wall to wrap around the walkway. And you see, oh my God, there's so much guest vomit on the floor. So we're gonna go back and look at that with a handyman. I super speed it up really quick just to you know, get that cleaned up. And then uh, that was the statistics of the ride. And like I said, I'll throw in at the very, very end a quick clip of the ride running. Uh, we'll get the statistics up there so you can see that as well. Um, I thought this corner was a little empty. Uh, and this is one of the last minute ads on here as well. I put in a little plaza, uh, which was pretty cool. And again, this will be uh, an area for our customers to walk past, walk around, just to add that theming and vibe we have uh, within our area, right? And it's super simple, you know, a three square building, uh, some theming around it, some trees around it, just to give it, a, again, that very alpine rustic feel. During the last of our benches and our trash bins there. All right, and that's more or less the whole area. I think uh, we've got some trees to be throwing here for the most part. And in the center there. And again, this is just adding to the excitement rating of the ride, right? So now that this theme is all done, we'll show you what that looks like on the your ride on that coaster. All right, so there we are. That's that's your area that we built out. Um, we will get you a real-time gameplay of uh, our coaster running with the statistics up. And uh, yeah, hold on for that right now. All right, guys, so here you are with the statistics for Wooden Roller Coaster 1. 8.83 in our excitement rate, 8.72 in intensity. Uh, pretty good ride here. Uh, I love it when it gets into the high eights, low nines. Uh, so do our guests, right? So, uh, as you can see, you know, it drops down off that first drop there and just weaves in and out of itself. Uh, super low profile coaster. And the intent here, again, just to keep it very low to the ground, uh, maximum speed, maximum impact, uh, without having to have a super high coaster. And, and that's what we wanted, right? We wanted like that very low profile GCI esque type coaster, uh, being the first coaster you walk into in the park in this area. You walk in, you see that, you know, that lift hill um, uh, with that uh, nice uh, building directly in front of you and you've got uh, your top spin off to the left there. You know, as the coaster, you know, creams in and out of everything, and you kind of sit there and go, wow, right? So, um, uh, again, you know, I'm noticing a little bit of bits of uh, guest purging uh, around, so I'm going to have to clean that up, mostly around that top spin there. Uh, there is a bathroom over there and a bunch of benches, I'm not sure why that's happening, but you know, we'll get that sorted out uh, for the next video. But here we are just walking even and out again uh, from a different angle. Love this part right here. All right. Uh, okay, so as I leave you uh, at the end of this episode two of our RCT Classic uh, series for iPad, uh, remember we've got uh, a couple things to do. Number one, uh, leave in the comments below the name of the wooden roller coaster, leave in the comments below the name of the top spin, and then what type of ride do you want on that mountain? A log flume, a mine train coaster, or a river rapids? Catch you guys next time. Thanks so much uh, for joining and speak to you then.